What is up guys, Flossie Missiles here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about some camping bikes or some trail bikes or some mini bikes, whatever you wanna call them. But basically, a bike you could throw in the back of your van and go camping when you set up and camp. Sometimes you wanna get on your bike and go into town and get some food or do whatever. You don't wanna rip down your whole entire whatever you got laid out. So yeah, basically I've gone through three different bikes. First bike was a 2014 Honda Grom. And then I went to a 1974 um, CT70 with a 125 swap. And then most recently I had a 2020 Kimco Spade. Currently I can't find the, the perfect bike for me. And I got a couple categories I'll go through. And basically I'm looking for suggestions of what I should get. I kind of have an idea of what I want to get or what I think can make work, but I'm not sure if there's more suggestions out there. I just don't know that many mini bikes that are around that 220 pound range that'd be good for the back of a van. You know, there's that Kawasaki Z125. I haven't tried that, but it looks heinous. Yeah, so there's a few other bikes I know. And then there's all those Chinese ones, SSRs and whatever. But let's go through some categories between those three bikes that I'm gonna compare. That I've owned. So the first one is gonna be the looks. I hated the way the Grom looked. It looked too like futuristic -y for me for, to be on the back of a 1980s or a 1970s van, whatever I, I'm driving. The Spade, I really like the look of that one. I'll post a picture of it up right here. Actually, I'll post a picture of all of them. Um, yeah, so the Spade, I definitely like the look of it. CT70 looks amazing. That looks like perfect on the back of a van. Yeah, you can't get anything better looking for as far as like a little mini bike goes than a CT70. A power. Grom had good power. Is a 125cc. The Spade has a 150cc engine, so it's actually a little bit quicker. Not crazy faster, but definitely, definitely better on power than the Grom. And the CT70 obviously comes with a 70cc engine, so you have to, to upgrade it if you realistically want to drive it on the street. Like we get ran over with a 70cc engine, especially because we ride doubles with these. So it's me and my girlfriend on these bikes. Uh, let's talk about the handling. Grom handled good. The Spade even handles better than that. I think because it's a little bit longer. With two people on it, you can still handle that thing pretty good, go around some corners pretty fast, do all that sort of thing. The CT70 handles horrible with two people on it. It's just not it's just not a good time with two people. So that's for handling. Let's go to quality. The Grom is great quality. It's Honda, so it's got great quality. Everything on it's super nice. Parts hold up. The Spade, not so good of quality. I had a 2020 Kimco Spade and it was breaking down. They're made in Taiwan, so they're not a Japanese product. I know they're kind of newer for the US market over here especially, but yeah, their quality was just not there. Uh, there's, there's a reason I sold mine. And then the CT7 was great quality as well as it being a Honda. And then we'll go to reliability. Grom had great reliability as a fuel injected bike. I had mine for four years, never had an issue with it. I just changed the oil on it and it was always good to go. Yeah, all the parts that are on it are just quality, no engine issues nothing bike was great a spade reliability the reliability on the spade was just terrible it broke quite a few times in the short amount of time i had it before i got rid of it yeah luckily when i sold it it was all good but yeah reliability on the spade was just not there ct70 it could be good or bad i mean it kind of just depends uh how they were kept up through the years some of them that have like no miles it's still i'm sure are somewhat reliable. They are carbureted. The Spade and the Grom are both fuel injected, so a little easier to start for sure. We're gonna go to how easy they are to transport. Grom is pretty easy to transport. It's 230 pounds, and you have to use like a motorcycle carrier unless you get a skid plate on it. If you get a skid plate on it, you can use an MX hauler, which I prefer because it's just like a little, I'll post one on the screen. MX haulers are the way to go. And you know, it's, it's pretty easy enough to transport but with a skid plate, it would be, it's even easier. The Spade is a little bit bigger, so it's a little bit harder to transport. Not much, it weighs 248, so you got you know, a few more pounds on it. And then yeah, the length and all that stuff, it's just a little bit more difficult. And then the CT70 is butter to transport. The bike only weighs 152 pounds. It's an awesome bike to move around and it'll fit right on of a, an MX hauler. How about the price of all these? You can get a 2014 Honda Grom, if you keep your eye out, for around $2,000 right now. You can get a 2020 Kimco Spade, used for about two thousand dollars as well and a ct70 that's 125 swap and good enough to drive around not showroom quality you can get it for around two thousand dollars so they're all the same price and they've all kind of gotten to, well except for the spade the spade's probably gonna go to even lower in price but the ct70 will keep going up in price and the grom is kind of like i think where it's gonna hang out for a while since they're like four thousand dollars new it's probably gonna hang out the two thousand dollar range for the next five years you know so they kind of plateaued the size of the grom is pretty good it's smaller than the Spade, so the Spade's obviously the biggest one. The Grom is bigger than the CT70. The CT70 is obviously the smallest. So CT70 smallest, Spade is the biggest. Grom's like that middle ground, which I really do like that Grom a lot. And then buying parts, like the readability of parts and getting parts, uh, it's super easy to get Grom parts. You can go to any Honda dealer, any gasket or anything like that. If not, they get ordered and get it in like next day. The Spade, 
<laughs> the Chemco's fade, not so much. It's actually really, really hard to get parts for. Even from the, our local dealer, Chaparral, it has a big Chemco thing on the side of it. Chemco is like one of their, their brands that they sell, whatever. And then there's one in Upland as well. They can't order parts for them. How crazy is that? Hopefully find used ones online, but for the Spade, they could not find or order any parts for it. It was nuts. Brand new bike, 2020. A year old now, two years old basically. So yeah, hard to get parts for. And even the CT7, you can order parts on Amazon. You can get parts on eBay and get that stuff pretty quick. A lot of the stuff that's small, you can get actually from the shop still, from a Honda dealer. Basically in conclusion, none of these bikes are perfect for me. And that's why I'm trying to figure out how to make something work or if there's another bike I just don't know about. I think what I want to do is get the Honda Monkey. Put one of those on screen. If you guys haven't seen those Honda Monkeys, they are awesome. They look so cool. They have that retro styling, but they're fuel injected bikes. They're brand new, this, that, and the other. They're awesome. The only drawback with them is that they're a one-seater and I have a girlfriend who likes to ride on the back of the motorcycle. So yeah, I found a company that sells rear pegs for them, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I might just get one and do that and maybe extend the seat. This is kind of an idea I thought of. There's a, a rack you can buy to go on the back, like a storage rack, and I can just build like a little cushion right there. Boom, two-seater. I don't know if that would be ghetto or if that would even work. I haven't even sat on one, but so it's like the same motor and everything pretty much is the Grom, just has a cool look to it. So the 2022 Grom and Honda Monkey should be coming out at the end of this month and they actually have an updated engine and they have a five speed transmission. So that'd be super cool. But those monkeys are so expensive. I can't even believe it. I think they're like $600 more MSRP wise. I don't know if the dealer is going to try to upcharge or anything like that. But even on the used market, the monkeys are seriously so insane. I don't know why. Maybe they don't make that many of them or something, but they're definitely a cool bike. Right now, that's what I'm leaning towards. If you guys have any suggestions on what bikes I should get or what bike I should get, leave it in the comments below. If you just think I should get the Honda Monkey because it's a Honda, it's reliable, and then just do a little modification, put some rear pegs on it, some extra seat back there. That's what I'm leaning towards right now. The bike just looks so cool and it's a Honda, so you can't really go wrong. Well, that's where I'm gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more car content, maybe motorcycle content. I might do a video of me putting pegs and a rear seat on a Honda Monkey. I don't know. But seriously, if you guys have any suggestions, leave it in the comment below. I'm looking for something that will look good on the back of my Volkswagen, but also function well.